Amanda Fisher, I'm the Deputy Town Administrator, Town Clerk, and I assist the Envision 2030 Advisory Committee just on an administrative standpoint. Um, so you got all your emails from me, and I'm so glad to have you all here. I know we did kind of introductions, but since we have everyone present, I'd like to just run back through that again so I can take notes. Um, so Greg, will you, will you do another introduction just really quick for everyone here? Um, my name is Greg Marquez. Uh, I what else do you want to know? I have a painter. Yeah. Uh, watercolor primarily, and I also sell toys at the. Uh, I sell. I make wood toys, and I sell a lot of them at the farmers market. In the nice. Summer. Yeah. Knowing kind of your interest in this committee is helpful. Yeah, that's that would be it. Perfect. I'm Karen Ovenen, and uh, Greg is my partner, and uh, I'm a writer actually, and I used to um, run the arts board in Jamestown when I lived there. Awesome. Glad you're here. And Zoe, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Zoe Lewis. Uh, I'm a mental health therapist, but uh, <laughs> that's what I make more money doing. But I'm uh, um, acrylic painter, oil painter, and follower clay artist. Wonderful. Thanks for joining. So the members of the subcommittee, we are, we're missing one, but we have uh, Mary Gerald and Don Baumhover. Mary, do you want to introduce yourself first? Hi, I'm Mary. I go by Mary, and I'm a cellist, and I um, uh, I love Native American music, and um, so lived in Netherlands since 1988. Awesome, thanks. Don, you want to go next? I'm Don Baumhofer. I work for the town of Netherlands as community center manager, and I'm a 26 town of Netherland resident. And Karen? I'm Karen Garrity. I'm a town administrator. Um, Miranda and I are providing the support for all of the subcommittees for the Envision 2030 process. So we attend all or most of the meetings as many as we can. And it's a real joy to be a part of this conversation. I've been uh, living in the area for about 11 years now. And um, happy to be here and hear what you guys have to say. And thanks, Karen. And I see that Kimberly Logan jumped on, but it doesn't look like she has audio or video capability yet. So we'll have her introduce herself when she does. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to May. May serves as the chair for the subcommittee and take it away. Well, thanks, Miranda. Um, and thanks again, Miranda and Karen for your incredible hard work. You guys are amazing. Um, and what you know uh, about what's going on in town is also amazing. So um, I don't know, you guys that are members of the committee, did you have a chance to look through our goals and objectives? Or do you want to start with comments? Or would you like Don and me to talk about uh, what we have in this document? I'm open to running it either way. And I did just mute everyone just to avoid feedback. So if you have something you want to chime in, I'm just go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay, well, I will give a brief overview of kind of what we're trying to do with this. And then maybe Dawn can flesh out uh, what's already being done what some of the challenges are that face her in her role in the community center. Um, the challenge um, of, of burnout in volunteers is always a big one. So, uh, and we've talked about that. But our vision statement, what we're trying to do here is work on the identity of our town, um, we talked about how it's gone through a lot of manifestations and that it seems to be evolving now as a place where people really care about nature and our unique spot here between the Boulder watershed and the wilderness area, the national forest. So we put in natural and cultural resources of which we've always been a Mecca for musicians, artists, and as you see when we go through the document, we've tried to write in 
for local artists who might be interested in doing some of the work that the town might contract, like a map or whatever. I'm sure they're already doing that, but to continue that using local artists whenever possible. So we broke it down um, by the different things. Art um, offers diverse opportunities for creative experiences, including performing visual and literary arts. So support and provide public art, prioritizing local artists. And Don can really um, answer specific questions about a lot of this stuff, uh, what's going on at the community center. Foster public and private relationships, including local events. I don't know if you have been here long enough to remember the Wind Festival or the old powwow. We used to have a rodeo grounds in town. Um, so um, the ice rink is a good example of a partnership. Promote the community center auditorium to include live theater. Um, well, I had thought I changed that to say to do expanded. Anyway, the live theater, film series, dance, spoken word, concerts, and other performance arts. Maintain budget for and grow exhibition spaces throughout town with an eye towards ADA compliance. We talked about how we should really have um, some places that people can go comfortably to view art or hear a concert, um, even if they have a disability. And then, as I mentioned, prioritize local artists and the um, groups of development authority, ProSAP, Parks and Rec, Open mm -hmm. Space, Public Works, nonprofits, such as Wild Bear, um, put on a lot of local events and local businesses whenever possible. So since you are all artists, let me dip down to culture. I'll try to go through really quickly and then we can open it up. Um, so just back up a couple lines if you can. Thanks. So this is where we honed in a little bit more on our identity create an attractive, unique cultural identity or or try to describe the one that we have, not really create it, but describe it and expand the parts that we love. For Netherlands, that defines us as economically and culturally diverse, united in our vision of preserving our local ecosystem and the ability of longtime locals to remain financially solvent and remain in their mountain homes. So people that are selling at the local market are perfect examples of, of that. So then we go through embrace diversity, old and new, the uniqueness of our location, use of alternatives to flashing lights. I actually noticed that, Karen, in the old comp plan. And I wonder, at some point, I want to have a discussion about how those flashing lights on the highway got put in, because those are against the old comp plan too. Um, and then there's a lot, a lot of interest in a dark sky town because of the bird migrations. And um, I, I'm finding more and more birds in town over the years as well as wildlife. Exhibit historical photographs, articles, and artifacts throughout town, engaging students in project development whenever we can. Outreach to the other peak to peak communities we're thinking mostly Ward, maybe Jamestown, Rollinsville, um, reaching all the way to Estes or Allen's Park would probably be down the road away. But, um, you know, the towns that are pretty close, uh, um, I think we have a real identity here along the peak to peak. And that vision has been worked on for a while. Maybe we could get somebody to commission um, some art. Um, to highlight these wonderful towns. There was a great exhibit um, at the Gilpin Library of a guy who got a grant under FDR. FDR awarded some artistic grants. The guy was an architect, but also made lithographs. And he did quite a few of the buildings in Denver. And 
they showed his lithographs of Black Hawk, and they were described as Dickon-esque, and it really made an impression on me. It was just the kind of thing that I think we'd love to have more of here in town. So um, next bullet, publish an interactively <clears throat> active live website. Um, we noticed that the town website site um, doesn't have a different one for arts, culture, and education, and Dawn can speak to that because she has her own calendar there, so maybe a little more um, exchange, you know, a tab on the town page or something, and then we put in a few examples of good pages. And I think we're education, and really part of what we're trying to do with our element is to help define Nederland in a really positive way. Not that um, being a mining town or being a hippie town or, you know, whatever the different varieties have been of town. The fact is that a lot of people are moving here to retire. So trying to establish kind of the idea of a culture um, that will attract people with kids as well as retirees that can afford to move to Netherlands. So education, the schools are great, as you probably know, but um, we wanted to expand the idea of education as a process that goes throughout life and can happen on a street corner when somebody shows somebody a fingering pattern on the guitar or whatever. So provides opportunities for learning or showing them an art uh, painting technique. I saw a great Doug West thing like that down in Boulder once. And he actually was painting these pictures right on the, right outside the store. And I right away bought two little tiny ones. <laughs> so Netherland area provides opportunities for learning across ages, cultures, and socioeconomic backgrounds. Provide opportunities for mentorship, <coughs> and intergenerational interactions. And, you know, these are all great ideas and a lot of people are gonna agree with them, but we're trying to work on, and I've reached out to Karen and I know she's got a, a great resources in terms of what other people are doing, trying to figure out how to bring more people into the circle kind of, of, you know, taking on a project and, you know, bringing it to life and then having the next set of people ready for the next year, if that's what it takes. Um, next bullet, join the Boulder Initiative to recognize tribal stewardship and engage area indigenous individuals in the creation of cultural events. Um, Karen Blakemore just sent me, there's another article in the Boulder Camera about this. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to read it yet, but Boulder's really started to engage in the recognition of, of the people came for in years. And, you know, we have a long way to go before we get to where Canada is, where, what was it in 1996, the Truth and Reconciliation Project? They've just done tons of documentaries on um, everything from the residential Indian schools. And I think that would be a cool thing to get going up here, some kind of filmmaking. So we want to also really try to um, work with the school somehow to get kids and by extension, their families involved in what's going on in town, whether it's an art show or um, a trail maintenance or I don't know, a group art project. And then improve the mountain school experiences attract new students by collaborating with Boulder Valley School District, CDOT and other agencies to design and construct safe trails and highway crossings to and from schools. And we're thinking especially at the community center and the outdoor cutoff. Expand Netherlands cultural and historical awareness through arts and cultural initiatives, such as information boards along trails and in public places art projects depicting historical Netherland events. And then financially support uh, traditional festivals 
like Miner's Day and Powwow. So, did you guys come with any specific questions? Or Don, are you thinking of something that you'd like to add here? Where is Don? I'm right here. So, oh, okay. um, I, I just want to know what questions that the members of the public have or what their interests are or what they need would like to add and like us to hear to be included. <clears throat> Go ahead. Um, so we've lived here for about three years, just outside of Rollinsville. And you know, we I've lived in mountain towns before. It takes a long time to kind of like get your feet wet and get to know people. And we're really just interested, I think, in getting involved in the community. And I'm interested in how this seems really ginormous to me. And I'm just wondering how it's organized. Like, are there committees? Are they? Do they meet regularly? I mean, we're. I'm just really trying to figure out. What opportunities are there to get involved, um, and and how do I do that? Because and I think I think all this stuff sounds really good, but I think it sounds like oh, 45 years worth of work, and um, and uh, so having you know kind of like worked on the arts board in Jamestown, which is like 300 people, not like 3,000 people. I know how much work it is, and so. So anyway, we're just, I'm just trying to figure out what the structure is and how things are organized and how do you get involved and what projects are in the pipeline and who gets to say this is the thing I want to do. And so that's what I'm mostly interested in. I can answer that. This is Karen. Um, the process we're going through right now is, I'm, I, I have to leave my video off, unfortunately. Um, the process we're going through right now is envisioning. So it's not really looking at how is this going to all pan out. What we're looking at is what do we want the Netherland area, the greater Netherland area to look like in 2030. So you don't worry so much about how do you get there. It's more about what does it look like. And then we've started uh, the committees are working on then more specific objectives and goals. But it isn't determined, you know, who's going to be doing what. Um, it's more about what do we want it to look like and maybe how do we think we can get there, but not the details of who's doing what. That would come after. Once we finish this process and the final version of the Envision 2030 product has been accepted and adopted, that's when we'd want to start putting those you know, plans in place. And of course, the assumption is that um, the people who've been working so hard on the, this document and meeting regularly might want to be the people who kind of help bring more people into their particular um, garden and play and see what will grow. Well, absolutely, Karen. Thanks for talking about how the process works. And I'm still kind of confused because I feel like different committees are getting into different levels of detail. And um, I know that you guys rehash the economic development part of it, but um, this is sustainability group, for example, I think it has gotten very specific. And I mean, I would think then and may Jill might have some input on this, but we used to have a Netherland area arts and humanities advisory board. Cause at that time, that was the only way we could get a grant to put on the powwow and a wind festival. Um, since then, Karen is a grant expert. And I really think that um, before Karen comes to the end of her summer here with us, that it would be great to try to call out to as many people as we can because there's so many elements to putting on a festival and try to establish a pool of people. And Jill, I think you're really good at working with groups. What, what would you suggest as, and Don both, as we move kind of forward to the next thing, which Karen and Miranda, doesn't that mean we could start to get more specific. Well, um, 
I, I actually suggest that we kind of stick to the task at hand tonight, which is letting the uh, people who weren't a part of this arts cultural education committee kind of, you know, uh, give us feedback, whether they want to put it in the chat or they want to talk to us about it. Or, of course, they could just listen and add to the document, to the Google document. But let's not, uh, my suggestion is instead of talking about how are we going to make some of this all work, instead, let's talk more about big picture. What do we want the arts, education, and or culture landscape to look like in 2030? And, and when they look at what you've just presented, May, what's missing? Or what would they like to have <coughs> defined better or to understand better? or um, that sort of thing. Yeah, I surely would like to hear that. And also if people do want to go up onto the Google Doc and just if you agree with something, you know, just say I like this um, and so forth. But we can I get a lot done here today. Sorry, I want to just clarify that Google Doc is actually not open to public to give comments on it directly there is an opportunity to then submit your feedback on the website, but the Google Doc is left for the committees to continue to work off of. Oh, okay, thanks for clarifying. Yeah, so, uh, lots of ways on our website to give feedback. Yeah. yeah. What, um, happy to help on. If, no, wait. Yeah, um, yeah, just gonna say, I mean, it looks really great. Like you guys have done a really good job in, in kind of covering so many different aspects of, of public arts. Um, I was just, I mean, my main thing, I think the main obstacle as being, you know, someone who's involved in a lot of different stuff around town is um, just an obstacle to most of these goals, as you know, is funding. Um, and so it's, it's almost everything in town, arts and culture wise is completely run by dependent on volunteers. So, um, so it would be really interesting just to kind of brainstorm how the town of Netherlands could maybe by 2030 have an envision that establish maybe as part of its budget or something um a specific line item to fund arts and culture so um you know specifically earmark some some funding for it but i was i'd be really interested in the idea of um what may was saying about the arts advisory board too that sounds that sounds pretty interesting um you know supporting public arts on the streets which encourages non-motorized transport um things like i would definitely want to see on the education thing would be just um access to affordable early education um it's really important to a lot of us with young children up here and um yeah probably some other stuff i can definitely like if you want to ask any questions i'm involved in the um historical society in the Glappy house museum and the peace non-profit mountain farm for peace and um wild bear and the netherland community library so we've got a lot of artistic things going on, but it is all, it's all independent. So there's no like cohesion between, you know, a lot of these different things going on, which would be nice to see. Well, and since we live in a digital age, I, you know, I think about a web page. Um, it does a historical society have a tab on the web page or, you know, I, I would see maybe getting some, I'm not very good at web page layout, but, I've been to some really great web pages where you can find just about anything. And um, that would be a skill we might be looking for in a in a committee. And just a note, then who who just spoke? I want to make sure I get your name right. Yes, yeah, Jesse. Oh, Jesse. Okay. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. When you were talk when we were talking about um specific line item in the town budget for arts and culture. I heard a really interesting radio program about a Pakistani woman that um, has been an activist for a long time. And the burnout factor is mm -hmm. so fantastic. You know, it's just such a killer of stuff. Yeah. She, I will, I should have, I'll make a note. With, um, but to get a link to that website and maybe put it up here. But I didn't think the website really reflected what I heard in the radio interview, which is she gets people together. They're like, you know, it would be something that maybe we could offer to volunteers like a 
you know, a, a day thing where you um, talk about how you renew yourself and, you know, just the importance of eating right and getting some outdoor time and just life management stuff um, that I'm sorry, I'm horrible with names, but the mental health lady <laughs> probably would appreciate it, so. Yeah. Can I just, this is Karen Garrity. I just want to clarify something. So you guys were talking about a nonprofit arts organization that basically uh, was able to secure grant money. So you weren't talking about an arts advisory board to the town. You were talking about a kind of nonprofit collective art organization, similar to like Boulder County Arts Alliance and um, yeah, you know, I just want to make sure that it's clear because it's not really an arts advisory board you're looking for. You're looking for kind of a non nonprofit, um, what's the word, membership based or whatever collective of arts organizations that can then seek grant money separate from the town. It's, I just want to make sure I got that right. Because That's correct. Right. That's a very successful model that almost every community I've ever been in. I was really surprised that Nederland didn't have one, like just uh, Nederland Arts and Culture, um, whatever, you know, association, because there is such power in having that collective energy with uh, artists and art organizations and cultural organizations, um, and then their ability to uh, go for, if they're a 501c3, um, they can then get that grant money. The yeah. other thing is, I just wanted to mention that Greg had asked about going to scrolling back to the art section. So, Greg, it sounds like you'd like to see what was in that section. And then did you want to um, also add to the conversation? Uh, I'd like to. I don't believe I'm capable of, but um, I, I, I understand the importance of volunteers. But what about if these people that, that ran the powwow were paid somehow? I mean, if it were a for-profit powwow that sold corn dogs and all that good stuff, um, maybe that's a, a, another way to go. I mean, I volunteered a lot over my lifespan, and and I love it. But um, but if they're for-profit, doesn't that take care of some of the burnout? Uh oh. I think it was a nonprofit that she was talking about. I love I love the idea of for profit though. Um, set me up. Yeah, someone has to do it, you know. <laughs> well, I, I mean, we're putting together this year. We're putting together um, a living histories heritage days in September. We have like we're putting together. We have community yard sales. Um, there's going to be you know an arts week with wild bear that they should Jill should probably talk about and. Um, so there is there is a lot of stuff kind of happening, but Greg, were you talking specifically? You mentioned the powwow. Were you saying that volunteers for events like powwows should be paid, or were you saying that the art collective, instead of being a nonprofit that can uh, get grants and stuff, you think the art collective should be for profit? I was uh, either, either. Sorry, Greg, just trying to get clarity around what you were saying. No, that's, I mean, it, volunteers are great and, and really help with a lot of these things, but if they're run as for profit things, like, for example, one of the things that I'm really surprised at is that a town this size of the size of Netherlands doesn't have an art gallery. Yeah, totally. I do, though. And, and yeah. that, again, is not the, I'm sorry. Last year it did for, you know for a few years there it closed so it couldn't yeah. stay open it wasn't making enough so i'd like to speak to that if i may so um the community center we we don't have an art a, a specific art gallery but the community center and most businesses in town so we're talking pre-covid um, display the art of local artists on their walls in just about every restaurant, the bank, um, on a kind of rotating basis. 
um, and they'll do events. A few years ago, we even had the Friday night art walk, and it was um, a lot of work. <laughs> it was a lot of work. It happened once a month, and um, the businesses who chose to participate would, you know, put out, you know, discounted beverages and, and hors d'oeuvres, and people would walk around town. It was really a great thing. The community center proper, um, along and with it partners with Annie Thayer, and she has we do art at the center. So our walls are very boring. They're beige. They're government beige, and um, they artists about oh, she twelve years ago, I guess people started uh, a group started the community center foundation board started art at the center. And local artists, um, they're uh, it's vetted. It's you know the it's jury. It's a jury show. Each artist put is allowed six pieces, and they're displayed throughout the building for four months at a time. And we open each show with an event called Art at the Center, basically a little wine and cheese event in the evening. And um, of course, that hasn't happened in over a year now, but we want it to come back again. And all of those spaces serve as kind of a collective community-wide gallery. The art that hangs on the walls at these all the places, they're all for sale. So I, I can go to a restaurant in town and see um, a piece that was at the wall, uh, you know, last year was at the community center for four months. And now it's hanging at Salto or at Very Nice or in the bank. So... That's kind of how we've dealt with that. And that's, that's been fairly successful. Although there is, I would love to see a overarching way to display that. And in the past, to, to speak to Karen's point, that group was the Netherland Area Humanities and Art Board. And there, ha there was a bit of an effort a, number, a few years back to revive it and it was unsuccessful. But um, at the time it worked very well. If I can I want to jump in here and just kind of share what drew me to this group tonight. Um, I, I sort of look at this from like a long term perspective, you know, I, I'm my main passion, my main interest is in, uh, you know, or my main obsession, I guess, not so much passion, but is in fighting climate change and been thinking about how to do that. And how can I contribute my specific skill set to the effort, you know, uh, and my skill set is art. You know, I'm a visual artist. I'm a writer. Uh, I'm a and I'm a therapist. And I'm a general like outdoor adventure person. I've been thinking, how can I, you know, beyond just beautifying our town, um, art serves a per a function of, you know, tapping into an element of of uh, you know our, our general human connection, our psyche. Uh, uh, that they can't really be accessed any other way. And I'm, I'm, I've been trying to think like, is there a way that we can use our art um, in this effort? You know, I think about, um, you know, you know, feelings of powerlessness that are so pervasive with, you know, like the state of the climate and like, you know, predictions about the future. How can we combat that by coming together as a community, you know, in the form of community art projects? You know, I'd love to have I've even thought about how could I do this on my own property, you know, like, you know, like a community mural project where, where there's some sort of unifying, I don't know, message that we're trying to create here. Um, Jill, I just, I'll read your message in a second. Um, so for me, what interests me about this is, is really, you know, beautifying the town, I think is a great idea. Um, but for me, it's more like a, a kind of a deeper purpose, you know, 10 years from now, things are going to, you know, we're going to have a much better sense of, you know, what the future is going to look like for our kids. Um, and how are we going to help them develop, develop resilience? How are we going to foster community unity? How are we going to pull together through this? And how can we use our arts uh, to foster that? Because uh, I think things will look pretty different in 10 years. So that's kind of my two cents here. There, are so <laughs> sort of hard to articulate all my thoughts at the back that are in my head at the same time. Can, can I ask who just sp spoke? Yeah, Zoe Lewis. Well, thank you, Zoe. Um, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> One thing I wanted to just share with you, Zoe, in case you didn't know, is that um, the DDA actually hired Mandy Vink uh, to help them put together a public art master plan. And one of the, uh, and it's not quite finalized. I think they're bringing it to the board within the next uh, month or so to the board of trustees to sort of get their nod of approval as well. And, and, and some of the elements that you've talked about are included in that plan, like doing a collective community project, you know, so um, I, you're not alone. I just want you to know that there is a group of people who are very interested in seeing a very rich and robust public art program that is interactive and inclusive and um, really engages the community. So thank you for saying that. That's really cool. What's it called and where do I? So it's the Netherland like? Downtown Development Authority and they um, meet once a month, the second Wednesday of the month at six o'clock. We actually put meetings up on our website, on the town website. Netherland Downtown Development Authority. Development Authority and they do have funding. And they have a couple of funding mechanisms. And so one of the things they decided was a priority, which is awesome, is to get more public out art, especially in the downtown area. So they thought, thought instead of just doing plop art and just, you know, instead have a plan, you know, how how will this look? What's our vision? Um, and it would have been lovely to have you as a part of that. <laughs> I'm texting myself. That process. Um, but anyway. Anyway, stay tuned because it will be finalized and presented to the Board of Trustees pretty soon, like in the month, I'd say. Awesome. Thank you. So, May, can I can I chime in here for just a minute? It's Kayla. Hi, Kayla. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know me, I have been involved in the the. the theater, the music uh, portion of it up in the, and the theater part of it up in the community center for when we originally started and got the building from Boulder County School, uh, I was charged with two other people to do the theater part of what we envisioned this building to be and to put something in it that would be of benefit for the community. And we came up with this wonderful little theater. The reason it's called the backdoor theater is because the front door of the building was used primarily, which is not used now, the door that goes into the multipurpose room. And we had to enter by the back, what was the back door. So we named ourselves the backdoor theater and now it's the front door of the building. But anyway, I digress. I was sitting here writing down all of these notes about this conversation. And um, from my perspective, there are things that have been done in this community and there are two reasons that things either fail or succeed and that is money and volunteerism. And you can hit these projects from one or both directions and it has a lot to do with, with your outcome. Um, I, I think if we talk about the town as far as our uniqueness, for those of us who've lived here long enough to know that maybe when we start revising our codes, that part of that is in the signage area. For those of you who also don't know, there used to be this wonderful, Christine Vogel, I painted this incredible dinosaur mural on the side of uh, the rock shop on that big side that's uh, facing west. And it actually went up the top of the building and had the, you know, the spines on the, the, the back of the dinosaur. And because of our coating, they made Roy paint over that. And now it's a lovely turquoise flat wall, but we have lots of big walls in our town. And for those of you who now drive in from the Rollinsville area, the mural that's on the side of what used to be the old garden, it's now um, Stacy J's um, uh, marijuana shop. I think is fantastic. So the idea of there's a whole huge wall up at the community center that should have a fabulous mural on it. The, why can't we have a mural fest in this town? And if we're going to go funky, let's really go funky. We can have incredible signage in this town. There was a time where one of the ideas was when the historical society had all of our old mining equipment, equipment to portion that out along the trails and have it work as art, some of these big pieces. We can still do things like that. 
that brings in our heritage of our community, and it's also educational. Um, we have a community center foundation board right now that I think could work as a, a facilitator. Um, you know, the idea that the art at the center that Dawn touched on, uh, I think is a, it would be a way of augmenting something instead of reinventing the wheel every time we turn around. It's like, let's take something that works and either maintain it or augment it and make it even better and in, more inclusive. For instance, one of the shows that we do up at the community center, art at the center, we should have a partnership with the schools Maybe the fall show could be, uh, you know, incorporating the kids in on that. Um, one year they did have the art teacher there had the kids paint self-portraits in the style of Frida Kolo, and they were all displayed on the one long hallway upstairs, and it was, it was fascinating. <laughs> it was also scary. You'd walk down the line and go, okay, that kid's good. That one's going to need therapy. That one's good. That one's going to need therapy. But it was, it was very... It was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. So the idea of, of getting schools more involved in the art at the center, I think, is a wonderful thing. We used to do uh, painting classes after art at the center, and, and that was done. You bring your kids in, and, and some of the artists that displayed then taught little mini art classes. Um, I think things like that should be encouraged because, Who again, was it's running that, Taylor? Who was running um, those things? Well, okay, so Dawn, that's yeah, no, that's yeah. Annie Thayer, and she actually she juries the show and hangs the art along with um, some other volunteers on the committee. And once a year, she does a demo show. That's usually um, she usually does that in the spring, in late May or early June. And of course, that hasn't happened in the last year. But we are looking forward to, and perhaps when we kick it off again, when we're able to gather again. Um, hopefully this fall, she may do a demo show in the fall instead. And so she um, uh, gets funds from the artists when they register where there's a fee to uh, enter the show, you know, the art at the center. And she uh, uses those funds to purchase materials for the demo show. So she contacts people and she's had up to eight people at one time do the de demonstrations. It's a great family event. It's very well attended and people love it. Yeah, into those. Those are cool. So yeah, there's a great idea. We need to do more of it because uh, it works. Um, to the young, to the gentleman that asked the question, why we don't have a, a gallery in this community? It's because the pro there, we have to have a place to put it in. And right now, where is there a building that's available for something like that that can have that kind of foot traffic that's going to make it be successful? Um, we, you know, there was an art gallery for a long time in the in the what is the now the uh, Thai restaurant. Uh, Ron had that in there for a while. Um, so I think geography has a lot to do with it. Uh, again, it's it's money and volunteerism. It's that that either kills or makes each one of these things we're talking about. And um, so there are things that are done. There is now a. The Caribou Room is facilitating a lot of concerts in the in this area. Uh, the theater. I'm 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 personally hoping to do another a play. Hopefully, when we can reopen the the theater up again, we did a lot of programming like that. We did have groups from the symphony, and we had Creed Repertory Theater, and we brought had a silent movie with Max Morath came up and did the piano. You know the da 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 and it's all financial. When the community center got renovated, the uh, the powers that be went for lead certification on the building, and it put them quite a bit over budget. So tenants that were in the building had rents raised substantially, and so the kind of programming that Backdoor Theater could do got uh, curtailed quite a bit. So. Again, it's money. It's it's enthusiasm and bringing money and bringing volunteerism and um, I just think that we don't need to reinvent the wheel every single time. Let's figure out how to make the wheels turn better. And I think there are uh, ways of having 
uh, like-minded people need to find one another again. Because yes, we are. I think we are. We're kind of dispersed. And for those of you who don't know other people or are new to the community or want to get involved, let's try and find a way of having uh, um, an arts organization in the community that you can then put your energy and your ideas and all your creativity towards um, enhancing and sharing. And, you know, I think there's a lot of really talented people out there. Um, one of the questions I had, May, was, you know, we talk about Netherlands identity. Our identity is, I think, different for everybody that lives here, but there's also an identity that Netherlands has from people that don't live here. And I think that's a real interesting thing to find out what is, how do people perceive Netherlands? Is it positively? Is it negatively? What are the good things that we do? What are things that we could change to make it better? How can we, but to get ideas from people that don't live here about things that are working and things that maybe they think aren't working, just as a, a point to sort of fix and move on from or, or to augment, and it was well, just I an really interesting thought. That, yeah, what we get into is that whole deal of, of a lot of kind of straight lines and they don't make this folks of a wheel, you know. We need yeah. to put the rim on the wheel. So yeah. hopefully we'll get some ideas here. I wanted to hear more from Greg and I'm sorry, the the your other person that's in on the call, Greg. Because um, I feel like you might have had more to say and did, I don't know whether, yeah, hi. I think my concern is really community building and the way I've done community building before is through the arts and like really how do, you know, I'm listening to you guys talk about this and all of you guys have lots of experience and it, it sounds like you're talking Chinese to me. And I'm trying and I'm trying to put it together. How is this organized? How is this organized? You know, where, what are the structures in place and what are the committees and, and how is it organized and who's talking to who? And then, and everybody's been talking about volunteerism. How are people engaged to, you know, get onto committees and start doing things? How, what's the outreach in the community and where are things advertised? And so I'm just interested in the big conversation of building a, you know, get, I think there's probably, you know, Greg and I came because we're artists and there's probably, you know, four dozen more of us who are like, I don't know how to, I don't know what's going on and I don't know really how I can contribute and how is it organized. And so, so I'm just really interested in um, this idea of building community. And I think I've he I'm hearing that it's kind of fallen off. And so what are the ways in which um, uh, people who are have been around for a long, uh, long time can reach out to newer people and try to build a bigger chain of volunteers and people who are interested and engaged. And I think if you know artists want to have a voice, then they should be you know they should be engaged to be on committees or boards or whatever whatever you guys call them nonprofits or whatever um, to start planning things. And that's how you get people excited. Um, let them, ha you know, so that's what I'm interested in is building a, you know, entering into and building a, a stronger arts community. Well, we, I just saw someone put up a message that you should come to the public engagement um, forum because, you know, we're working on it um, in that committee. But again, it's, um, getting other people's perspectives. So it's really great to have new people coming in um, with a fresh perspective. And, you know, if you're relatively new to the area, you came here because there's something about it that you like. I mean, um, so, but, but to Kayla's point, which I thought was really cool about the murals, um, that could be a thing if you use a long string of uh, newspaper roll of paper. You could have kids draw, you know, what they like about Netherland, what they don't like about Netherland, and um, make a little, you know, anyway. 
Can I, I just, can I, this is Karen. I just want to respond to something Kayla said. I don't know what happened at the rock shop. I wasn't here, so I can't speak to that. But I can tell you that mur murals are allowed in town. And we actually have two that are relatively new that just um, were painted in the last year. The sign, uh, I'm not saying that the sign code doesn't need to change. Where, where murals can get into trouble is if they're also being used to advertise a product because it, it has to do with the wording and the text with the murals. So anyways, I just wanted to make it clear that murals are allowed. We, we okay. have two new ones in the last year and it's another one of the efforts that the Downtown Development Authority is working on. They actually were ready to start two new murals and decided to take a step back and do the public art master plan or public art plan first and then do the murals. So I just I just wanted to clear that up. Well, I think Christine got into trouble when they went up over the top of the building with the spines of the of the dinosaur that was on the side of the wall. It made it sort of three dimensional ish. And I don't know whether that was in the code, not in the code, but I know they had to paint over it, which was such a shame. Dawn, do you remember that mural? I might have been the property owner because that is was not a um, town building. That's not a town building, so it might have been something that that building. Well, it was owner. Roy. Yeah, Roy has the building. Well, Roy and rents it. Yeah, Roy rents, rents from, that. Yeah, right, he doesn't right. own it. Yeah. So, yes. so anyways, we don't need to go into the details. I just sure. I just wanted folks to know that murals can happen, and they do. And there's several in town. Mm -hmm. So I was really fascinated with what Karen just had to say, not Karen Garrity, yeah, Greg and Karen, is that correct? Is that your name? I'm hoping I have that right. <laughs> um, when you said you don't know how to engage, um, that I've heard that from a lot of people. And we, who, when we know what's going on, if we, if we don't know you're there, so we don't know how to reach out to you. So that is, it is an issue. And I don't have the fix. I sure wish someone did because that would help fix a lot of things, help connect a lot of people. And I love the uh, suggestion that you attend the community engagement, Charette, um, and give your input, because if you have ideas, I'm all ears. I, I appreciate your comment, thank you. I, I would also say that Naomi Elderberg, or Johnson Johnson's Elderberg is uh, posting on the NED several Ned Nederland Facebook pages that she is looking for artists who want to um, kind of collaborate and form sort of an artist co-op. So I think if you are interested in things like that, if you would look at Ned Heads, Ned Talks, some of the other Facebook pages, you might get kind of up-to-date information. You'd also see where um, some of the artists are showing in town because that's often promoted through the um, in social media Facebook pages. Just an idea. If I may, um, to that end, uh, I started about a year ago um, the Peak to Peak Artists group on Facebook and love to have any of you join, but also if we could post this information there, that would be terrific. Uh, and Naomi and I have been talking about that too, so I'm excited about the possibilities. Um, but yeah, that would just be another good way to reach a more specific audience. That's awesome. You know, I wonder if um, I see people writing notes here that, um, but I'm just wondering if we can include, put in a tab on the town page that might say, want to volunteer? And then maybe the person who, I don't know, who would do it, but they would go through the emails and figure out um, where this person might apply themselves. Because not everybody wants to be on a committee, but a lot of people want to volunteer. Um, the one thing I do want to say is that, remember, this is not a, the town of Netherlands, the government um, entity's vision. This is the whole community. So I just want to remind you that doing things like uh, uh, trying to have a, a solicit and bring in volunteers, the town website may not be the best place. Um, 
you know, we don't have a staff person who's managing a volunteer program like that. Uh, we may not know what all the different organizations and entities need as far as volunteers. So I'm just putting it out there that think broader, think more than just like the town website. Is there another website? that might work better? Or is there an organization, a cultural or arts organization in existence already who would be interested in taking the lead on that? Just, just a reminder. Well, you make a good point. Um, and then you would just have to have a link to their website, but then you have to lay out the page so that when people see the page, they have a con, they can go to where they want to get. Um, faster. I think we need so, a chamber of commerce. Well, It'd be nice to have a chamber again, revitalize bingo. the chamber to support nonprofits and prop for profit business. I agree. Is, yeah, that's a great idea. But who's going to do that? That is how the chamber is. Well, I think it should be a goal. Doesn't matter who. I just think it should be a goal that we re revitalize. Yeah. I agree, Joe. Yeah, I guess we don't want to make it a goal to do it ourselves. We could say a revitalized um, chamber of commerce, not like the town is going to do it, right? A revitalized chamber of commerce. Jill, are you talking about for businesses or, you know, because that's sort of like the de facto DDA works as the whatever chamber, but have you ever thought of the idea of like an arts chamber? Well, well, the DDA doesn't cover Well, maybe, but you know, honestly, the, no, and the, the DDA, chamber of commerce. The DDA yeah, is, not, is not a chamber. I just want to make that really clear. Um, a downtown right. development district is really supposed yeah, the, to be focused on blighted, improving the infrastructure. Yeah, right. I, I just wanted to clarify that because somebody said that the DDA was the chamber and they're really not. They don't they don't act like that at all. They're more about improving the yeah. infrastructure in the downtown area. Well, what about a combining No, um, no, the the Netherland, let me explain it. The Netherland Chamber of Commerce um was where it had members and all um, businesses and non -pro you know, for profit and non profit businesses, including Eldora and other businesses in the surrounding area could pay a membership. And then there was a monthly meeting and, you know, probably the Friday, first Fridays could be organized through that or, you know, arts events or whatever. But then we, we had a, we had a budget because people paid for a membership and there would be guest speakers to learn about marketing your business or, you know, there were all kinds of great um, things. And I think it died maybe like 10 or 15 years ago. I, th I found it to be a gap in our community and I still feel that way. I think yeah. it could actually support a lot of these things that we're talking about. Yep. Right. Let's see the note, a revitalized chamber of commerce, which includes businesses and nonprofits, I guess, right? Can't keep up or with all businesses. Based businesses. Nonprofits are businesses. So it'd be for-profit and non-profit businesses. Oh, I see. For and non-profit. I think that, well, if it's non-profit, is it a business? I guess in the yeah, eyes of the state, business. it is. Yes, it is a business. Which includes for, it just doesn't sound right, which includes Nonprofits and businesses, business and nonprofit. Why not just write it that way? Well, I think it's confusing. do get business licenses. So to Jill's point, they are considered businesses under at least like town code. They're actually corporations. They're federal corporations. For-profit and nonprofit businesses is correct. Well, can we, let's see, can we go, which includes nonprofit and for profit businesses? Uh, th this is just, uh, these are just notes basically, and they will be all cleaned up when we get to our final document. So I wouldn't worry too much about the exact language at this point. And instead, let's try to capture as much input as we can. There are some people who haven't said much, and I just want to make sure 
they're all being heard. Jesse, was there anything no. you wanted to add to the conversation? Yeah, I mean, there's just a few exciting things coming up too. I was interested in whoever um, had written something about the tribal stewardship. I would like that to definitely kind of stay on there. We've got an interest in um, sustainable artist, um, earthworks artist coming in later this summer to install um, a natural playscape down at the reservoir. And he really wants to um, conduct some programming with music and arts and um, maybe musical instrument making. And he also wants to do a land acknowledgement um, ceremony. So I was definitely trying, <laughs> when I saw that on there, I'd love to, if anyone knows like, how we can get in touch with some more area indigenous individuals to create these cultural events. And um, and yeah, just with COVID getting over, we're, we, you know, it's it's hard to think back to the before times. Um, but, you know, things are things are happening. So we do have like this weekend, we're going to be um, working on some historical historical um, archives and looking at some imagery. Um, do -do -do. Let's see. I got nerves. But yeah, it is like just 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 to emphasize kind of what Kayla said, it all all these options, you know, the, the ideas are all amazing, but it always comes back to funding and volunteerism. Um, so there are, you know, there are so many amazing organizations in town, but it, they do all depend on on volunteers and um, and people get burned out with with the amount of work. So it's about how to how to better support the people who are putting themselves out there and, and working for this stuff. and. Um, and just, I'd like to kind of maybe just emphasize pr promotion of, of sustainable art in general. Um, I love the murals are really good. One thing I tried to do several years ago, um, that, which went in front of the DDA was mural art on all the utility boxes around town. So I really wanted to try and kick off um, one of those public art projects where we paint on on the utility boxes, which is something, you know, really common in the front range. So many towns have done just, this. Just, get, this is Karen. I just want to tell you, um, as being a public art manager for 10 years, I think you know I was, um, you can't do it if you don't own the utility boxes. Exactly. So, that so, was it. Right. That's the problem we have is that we don't own them like Fort Collins does, for instance, they have their own electrical service, you know, and so they have their own boxes so they can paint them. But Excel yeah. yes. really doesn't want to have their their boxes painted just just to let you know. Yeah, that was exactly it. So, you know, it's just kind of making that was what that was what we ran into. And it was like, well, that was just, a, you know, the end of the end of that conversation. So it was. It's really disappointing that Excel wouldn't go that way. And I wonder if there's anything we could do to work with, you know, things like that. To uh, That was, yeah, that was the end of that was the end of that story. But um, <laughs> it, it didn't happen. But yeah, for people who are kind of interested to know why, why these things haven't happened. Like there are people who are really, um, really into working on it. And I know the, the DDA is also working on wayfinding too. So that's another opportunity for artists to kind of get involved um, and talk about our local distinctiveness and how to kind of enhance our unique identity. Um, and yeah, that's really all I've got for now. Oh, that's so awesome. Jesse, is there a link um, or on the town page to the, do you guys have a web page for the Historical Society? Not on the um, historical society, but there there is a link on the the town website first page if you want to check out any of the the part. That's the parks and recreation side of it with the the art installation. Um, but yeah, the historical society does does have a web page. It is. It, you'd probably be better off finding it through Facebook, the Facebook um, Netherlands Historical Society page, and then finding it through there because it's. Oh, you have a your own page. Okay. Great. Yeah, I've been um, slow to get caught up with everything going on around me. I've been sitting in here in Netherland for decades, and it's hard to keep up with all the great stuff that's going on. And um, so, but I'm interested in your historical archives because I live next to where Jimmy Griffith used to live. I should talk to you. We should get together. <laughs> I will email you. And Zoe, I would like to, um, if you want to send your email into town hall, 
or something, I'd like to get in touch with you also specific to some of the stuff you were talking about. Um, and Jesse, yeah, um, thank you so much. I'll put my email here for everyone. Make sure I wrote it right. I thought I'd just put out a general question as well. If anybody had anything they wanted to uh, talk about regarding the education component of this, since this is arts, culture, and education, I know it's a lot, but just to make sure if there was anyone who wanted to talk about that, with, that we do that as well. Well, Jesse, I know you have a small child, so what about um, Greg and do you have small children or, but I'd like to hear what um, you have to say about um, education. Uh, just definitely like the support for young, um, you know, access to affordable childcare for young, for young, the younger age is almost impossible to find in Netherlands. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really huge <laughs> for the age, you know, under five pre kind of preschool era. We've got new explorers is, is kind of our one in town. For, um, for Absolutely. I Well, and we're going to miss that little school across the way that used to be there. And there have been some others scattered around through town. Um, but that's an interesting topic. So what else can you, anything else as you look ahead to... <clears throat> When, um, in terms of what you're looking for in like the next phase, primary school, anything the town could be doing, you know, it just seems like mm -hmm. that would be one fabulous way to get people together would be to somehow have an I've been noticing this with the Envision thing. We haven't had a single picture. Um, kids like to draw. Kids are good artists. If we had um, like that mural, there's a great mural up at the elementary school and it depicts, you know, all these elements of Netherlands history. And so I think that maybe there's been a lack of the sinking of the gears, so to speak, between, because how else can you, and I'm sure Karen's gonna have a lot of these ideas coming up, uh, and I look forward to that, Karen. But, uh, um, yeah. You know, just have these projects in the high school kids could actually be of a lot of help, because a lot of them could do models. Let's say, let's do different models of what we want our residential areas to look like. Do we want to see teepees? Do we want to see yurts? Do we want to see RVs? Do we want to see gigantic homes? Do we want to see what, you know, and just have the kids draw their stuff. And then that would be a great place to really get people involved in, in what's going on in town. And granted, there are a lot of people who don't have kids in school, but if you hit all the school levels and the senior center, and town hall and the post office, you know, you've got quite a spread. So we may, Zoe, I think Zoe had something to say. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just, uh, I have little kids too. I have a seven and a half year old and an almost three year old. And, and, you know, for so many of our kids, the social distancing and social isolation and like, don't go near that person. It's not safe. That kind of training uh, is really part of their formative experience at like, a really formative time of their life. And so now that people are getting, you know, vaccinated and things are, you know, knock on wood, starting to shift, how do we sort of coax them back into a place where it's safe to engage with other people? And I think we could use art for that, you know, specifically for kids, you know, how can we, you know, how can we use art to help kids shift, you know, shift their perspective um, that, you know, other people are safe and, you know, how to start engaging with other people again, you know, social, everyone's social skills are just, you know, have probably taken a hit. Um, I've seen it in my son. My daughter has no, my three-year-old, almost three-year-old has no contact with other kids. Um, 
so yeah I just I think that that's something that we can maybe I don't know if there's a way to do that in the schools or yeah I'm sort of rambling but that's just a thought that's such a good thought Zoe I, I I'm sure that's going to be such a struggle for small children um, who this is all you know good point I agree. I agree. And I'm what I'm seeing, I didn't catch this gap um, under education when we were working in our committee, but I'm seeing a lack of inclusion of the library. Of course, Wild Bear is a huge part of education, outdoor education in our community, always has been. Well, not always, but for a very long time has been. And they do such a great job at it. They're going to be building their their new center, and I know that education is a huge part of their plan, but I'm seeing opportunities here, listening to the conversation for partnerships with the library, historical society, Wild Bear, it just kind of wrap around with arts, both visual, just all kinds of arts. So, I don't know, just an observation on Again, back to Karen's point, how do we connect the dots um, to make these things not exclusive, but so we're all not working parallel, but together in unity? Yeah. Well, this has been a really rich and robust conversation. Is there anything left unsaid from anybody who's attending that you want to make sure that we cover? It's just nice to connect with all of you. I feel like so kind of alone in my head half the time thinking about all this stuff. So it's nice to talk to Well, to, to your topic um, of rehabilitating the children, if you will, to um, a more natural environment. Festivals, we don't have festivals on here anywhere. And I think part of the charm of Netherland is that we had a tribal feel at times. The bluegrass tribe was in town. The weirdos with the dead guys are here. It was just like a real quick thing, like a powwow in and out. And I think that tribal environment, whether it's a powwow or a um, music festival and not just at the library, which is, you know, the library is right there between two busy roads. Obviously, Barker area is the place that we should have music and festivals. And um, because when you have kind of this environment where you have a fence up, I never liked the generators, but we've solved that problem now. We have the plug uh, place on the pole to for people to plug their stuff into. So, and once we get the dirt leveled out and the grass on it, and Jill, I'd love for you to speak to that. I just haven't had time, and I bet nobody else has either, to know <laughs> what that plan is for down there, but I'm hoping that there's definitely gonna be a place for a festival. Tell me that there is. <laughs> Open. I still had to drop off the call, but Jesse could probably speak to that. You know, that we did incorporate uh, irrigation for the Gershio area in our last GOCO grant submitted in October, but that was rejected and they actually asked us to take that out. And so while we were funded, it does not include any of the, the grass irrigation. But Jesse, do you want to pick up on that a little bit? Yeah, just to say that it's totally multi-use. There's, it's going to be open to all all uses, including festivals. It's just going to be restored to a natural meadow area. Um, that's the former sludge pond zone, anyway. So, um, yeah, totally open for for use for the community. Well, what about the place where the festival used to be? Um, Gershio. Yeah. Yeah, all the same. Still open, open, available for use. So you're extending the field, is that what you're saying? Or that's what it was, it was, I thought the festival area was open before they covered the sewer ponds. Did they extend it? I'm not really sure what the question is, but um, yeah, I mean, the, the planning's just for trade, like um, there's about a mile of trails to be built, a hundred trees are gonna be planted. 
um, 16 benches, six picnic benches, several thousand for shrubs, doggy waste receptacles, trash bins. Um, and then the former sludge pond is going to be restored to a natural meadow and Gershio is just going to be just going to be left alone, re regraded and reseeded. But yeah, all open for, for festival use. Great. Yeah, because the farmer's market is kind of like a festival, but it's a different energy. You know, when people are buying things for their home, they're in a different mindset than when they come from music, I think. And kids are the same way. I mean, when they're listening to the music that their parents love and their parents are seeing people they haven't seen for a long time, there's just a certain um, element that comes into it that really has been part of Netherlands from the very beginning. You know, there are, um, I heard there were teepee rings down there where Barker Reservoir is that they used to have for the powwows here for real. And um, it's always been a kind of a crossroads. So it has that, I mean, we're at a crossroads and it's really, if it's well managed, it's one of the greatest thing that come to the town, I think. So I put my trust in you ladies and um, let me know if there's anything, I should go to a meeting, but I've been kind of, it's hard to keep up with it all. Anyway, thanks, Jesse. Anybody else, Kayla? Um, oh, I could write books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, I want to hear from everybody. Just no. a parting shot, if I can. Um, I, I'd like to say to Zoe that um, I, I've got a, had a lot of experience coaching soccer in Denver, and I could take your kids' anxiety away in about 10 minutes with a soccer ball. So they forget it all about it, everything. And I don't know if they even have programs like that in Netherlands or the area. So. Maybe that's um, I know sports are different, but that's totally right on the physical release. The, the the community through physical exertion shared activity is really lacking here, but that's like the number one trauma and stress release mechanism. Yeah. I totally agree I with you. What's your, I, I, I can't see you. I don't know what your name is. Uh, I'm Greg over there on the, in the oh. red. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. And there is soccer. It's uh, sponsored through the Teen Center. It's peak. Um, it's peak to peak soccer. Okay. Um, program and it, it, they even ran it last summer, I do believe. Great. So it's run through the Teen Center. It's hosted through the Teen Center. Is that Teens Inc? Teens Inc. Yes. Okay. Yep. And Boulder Indoor Soccer hosts three summer camp, three weeks worth of summer camps up here. And there's kids hockey up here too. Well, what we really need up here, guys, is a pony ring. That's my personal agenda. If you really want to know, the the, the history of Netherlands is incomplete without the horse, and we could have a pony ring over here where the old garage used to sit. That's the best way. And if you put a little building like the Carousel of Happiness over it, you could have private sessions with. The kids that are having trouble with ponies. They're the best therapists. Anyway, that's my minute. That's my close. Who else? I just want to thank everyone because this has been really such a, a great conversation and such a variety of perspectives. Um, and of course, if anybody does have anything else they want to say before we end, you're certainly welcome to chime in. And I would encourage uh, Zoe, Karen, and Greg to just take a look at our website. You know, you could continue to read through things. There's a form to fill out to give feedback, which you can complete as many times as you'd like. Um, we're looking to get feedback through the whole month of April. So this is not your only time. It won't be your last and would recommend attending some other sessions. I'm happy, Greg and Karen, to send you that community engagement information. And you have my email. I sent you all the information for this session. So feel free to also respond back to me if there's something you need. And there's the charrette tomorrow night in person at the community center from five to seven, which I think would be very advantageous for people who want to continue certain conversations. 
Yeah, I'm not going to be there, but um, it'll be, I'm surely there'll be a lot of people. Have you had a lot of people sign up already, <clears throat> Miranda? So we have three people signed up for tomorrow. No oh. way. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I would say, you know, we, we ask that to you encourage your friends and your neighbors. I think one to, to Karen's point, you know, community engagement is challenging here. And that's why we have a whole subcommittee dedicated to it. Getting feedback from from maybe more than just kind of the usual group is really important to us. There are 1500 people in Netherland and 3000 in the peak to peak area. And we often only hear from a small percentage. So we'd really like to get as much feedback as we possibly can. I'm seeing nature playscape at reservoir coming as a part of Barker Meadow Parks, looking to promote cultural events. So these things in red, I'm just confused. Miranda, um, are you just writing down notes of what you're hearing? Yes, and then I'll, I'll kind of clean this up a little bit and transfer like some of the tangible goals and objectives into the Google Drive. I'm just kind of taking notes for the sake of everyone being able to see it. Okay, because um, I would like to make a bullet point for festival. I think that's important. Um, so whether it goes under education or where, but it's a part of education. It's a part of our culture. culture. Yeah. So not promote festivals, but um, well. May, can you qualify for me though? Can, a question, when you talk about festivals, there's festivals that cater to people coming into our community, or there are festivals that are internal that are here that are being done mostly for the residents that live here. And I think there's two really different distinctions of of the kinds of activities that you're that maybe we're thinking of or talking about. I'm or talking you... about both. Yeah, but you make okay. a good point. There. Are... They are different, but I think that if we were to get the word out um, and we wanted more people to come to some of our local festivals, we'd find that we could get people to come. So I think, you know, that goes back to festival management, parking, and so on and so forth. And I still kind of see that as a gap in the overall envision, but whoops, I don't want to take up any more time. No, and it goes back to volunteerism, though. The festivals, you know, NedFest and the Miners Days are all just dependent on, on volunteers. So, And money. And money, the thing exactly. That brought yeah. the, 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 the competitors was prize money. And, I mean, there's a circuit of guys that go around and do all of the mining competitions all summer right. long. And no, to no get profit the big competitors, we had to have good prize money. So, And it's the same way for the powwows, too. The big dancers, they come because they're – they're making money and yeah. well but it's more than that i think what it really I, had yes. come down come down to with the powwow was the location change didn't work going up to the high school didn't work and they had to do that because um there was no teen center to change clothes in in the event of a thunderstorm and the regalia is very very expensive so um so i want to make sure we have room for a nice powwow um, can I can I ask a question, May? May, didn't you in the arts? If Miranda, if we can scroll up to the arts, I thought festivals were called called out at least once, and pretty profoundly. Um, I don't think maybe I'm wrong on that, but I thought you guys did. Really? Oh, I, that's surprising to me because I know we talked about it in the beginning I know. when you guys were first yeah. meeting. Includes there were some other things. things. Yeah. Here, yeah, there's where it is. Financially support traditional festivals like minor days and powwows. Right there. Do you want something other than that, or do you want to change that a little bit? It's not saying what you want it to say anymore. Um, maybe we should take the financially support out and um say something. Maybe just say wait. Just say support or. In Support Move it all to support and plan for support and plan for you know traffic and parking for um and 
and then that goes back to the other issue, which is location and also interaction with the town. And there does need to be a look, I think, at some of the um, what it takes to put on a festival, how much it costs, what the expectations are. You know, I think we, if we want to recognize that a festival has an educational value, so maybe that's what I'm. Well, well, I just want to say, you know, the 150th anniversary of the Caribou Mine was a big event, and that was a collaboration between the library, uh, the Miners State Museum, the um, Netherland Area Historical Society, and the town. And it was awesome. And, and that was just a couple of years ago. And our plan was to do it again, of course, last summer, but then we had COVID. So I do think that's happening. I think the thing is, is just like everybody keeps saying, it comes down to money and volunteers. And who who is it that you imagine is going to be this group that does this plan, apart from the folks I already mentioned, who already have their hands full doing the festivals and events that they're already doing. So I just, I'm just putting it out there, just, just so you're aware that there is a group of people who have done that, and um, there certainly is interest for that. Um, I just, I'm not sure who, the, who, when you say we should do this, who, who is the we? What do you mean? I said we should do this. Well, well, like who, who's planning? You're, you're saying support and plan. See, I could see since this is no, a vision, I, I, I could well, see okay. it saying the community supports traditional festivals like Miners Days and powwows. That that makes sense to me, you know, because that's what the vision is, right? That in 2030 we're going to have a community that supports. Okay, the traditional that covers festivals. it. Yeah, okay, because if we do take sure, make sure that the everything is well planned and that includes planning for it in the other committees, I believe. You know, traffic flow and parking which is kind of lacking, but um yeah, so I just wanted to bring it in as, as an education because we were talking about a specific child and everybody's got their own idea. Um, and gosh, it's been such a great talk. Um, two minutes, who's gonna grab them? <laughs> well, we're losing people left and right. Now um, folks are, are going off because they're too frustrated. <laughs> So I think I think we're pretty good. I think Justice Tan and Kayla, um, yeah. if you each want to take a minute. Well, my I think what May is talking about is um, an overriding group that would be uh, that would be the umbrella that all of these other festivals would be under. And well, I think that could be the arts. That could be the arts and cultural. Um, absolutely. But I you do know, think that each, and each I one agree. of these I agree. festivals then ha has their own. I mean, the Miners Days comes out of the Historical Society. The uh, the powwow came out of uh, some Native Americans that live here that wanted to do that, that had the right connections, kind of thing. And and so you 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 know they're 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 all individual, and you're looking at creating some larger umbrella that would house all of these different kinds of festivals so that, you know, we talk about parking in the same way for them and we talk about, you know, sure. that it's more organized. Okay. Okay. Is that what you're talking about? Well, May? that's fine. Um, I, we do, we have to close here soon. So, um, May, do you agree with Kayla? I, I'm just, if that's your, if that's your vision, I'm, I'm just wanting clarification. Well, that was one of the things we put on the list is forming right. that collective. Right. It's a great thing to have on the vision, whether, you know, you could get enough volunteers to sustain it is, is another thing, but I like it as a vision item, just to, you know, Netherlands community members have a, have an organized nonprofit that supports, you know, Netherlands arts and cultural assets or something. Very nice final statement. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for allowing me to uh, participate. Um, oh, well, and of course. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Thank you guys right, for doing everyone. it. All. Yeah. Ha have a lovely evening.
Yeah, happy weekend, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.